ever heard of Gernsbach. Uh, very few people have, uh, but he was a, uh, you know, um, a, a science fiction uh, writer. And, you know, I, I, I'm not even sure of his name uh, myself. So, you know, he was another, this is a side story, this is not Hugo Gernsback. You know, he was saying, he wrote one of the first science uh, fiction magazines, Amazing Stories. It was eventually Amazing Stories. But he wrote a bunch of um, uh, magazines, uh, and it's on my tedhuntington.com BIM page, B-I-M dot H-T-M. If you go there, um, and you can see a lot of these images and updates about what's going on on the excluded frontier, on the seeing and hearing thought, uh, we are working together a web, both of insiders and outsiders, who are putting together this history of science and this secret story, and also the, the current and future story, and you know the stories that are going public about all of these uh, interesting sciences. Now, here is this magazine. Um, you were wondering, uh, it's interesting, like, I saw the Syracuse 1919 one, but a few a month earlier, and this is wrongly labeled, it's actually 1919, uh, Gernsback publishes this in his electrical experimenter, the Thought Recorder. And look at how the picture of the guy, the picture of the guy is exactly like the Syracuse picture p- printed a month later. Uh, it's almost the exact same picture. That's Marois, sorry. <laughs> So it's the exact same picture of the guy, but now there's a woman and a secretary. Almost identical picture, right? Um, so he published it, and then he, that wasn't the end. He kept telling the public about this. He, he kept on. In 1920, he uh, published another one. Let me see if I can find it. Another picture uh, of the Thought Wave Recorder this time. And uh, so... Uh, Here's another one, um, Science and Invention. The Dream Recorder, he publishes. I mean, he really was a rebel. And he owned his own television station, and a mechanical television station, one of the early, and a radio station. He was one of the first to, to broadcast um, uh, the mechanical television stuff. And he was into electronics, and he, was, he rejected a lot of pseudosciences. And stuff. He um, he rejected like uh, he rejected a lot of that stuff. But also, he wrote. I mean, this is the amazing thing. He he published a magazine, and uh, I, I guess it was the 30s or 40s. I'm not even sure. Called Sexology, all about the science of sex. Sexology. Who's ever heard of that? Sexology. You know, I mean, it's something we've heard of Kinsey. You know, Alfred Kinsey. Though some of us have. Um, but this person felt that sex was worthy of a scientific field, a, a study, a scientific study, sexology, you know. Um, and it still exists to this day, as a matter of fact. Uh, there's just not a lot of uh, work going on there. Uh, or certainly not publicly, if there is. Um, uh, but, you know, sex is a very interesting... We love sex. I mean, obviously, we keep reproducing. It's the method and reason, and it feels good. Um, and it's nonviolent when it's done with consent, you know. So, uh, so, but the thing is that this guy had the the chutzpah, the braveness, and the vision to say, "I'm going to publish a magazine called Sexology, and I'm going to take sex and science and bring it to the public and say, look, you know, the truth. It's time to face the facts, uh, you know, and it's time to move forward with our lives and with the truth and science." Uh, he published Sexology. And the one comment I read about it was that Playboy came along in the 60s, and pretty much uh, that was the end of Sexology or whatever. And, you know, things went from there. But clearly, this guy, uh, Gernsbach, uh, was a very smart guy. And he's just unknown in history. Hugo Gernsbach. Uh, there is the Hugo Award, and it's named after him. Uh, but he died in the 60s, I guess. His his letters and archive are in Syracuse, of all places. I guess he lived in New York City, so many things uh, gravitate over to Syracuse from there. It's like the extended storage or something. <laughs> but there it is. If you ever had I been in Syracuse, I had been a little smarter and more into science, I would have checked out these things. Um... You know, uh, the, as I said, the 1919 Syracuse Herald uh, 
microfilm. Take a look at that one if, if you're in Syracuse. And then now the Hugo Gernsbach letters uh, and papers are probably worth taking a glance at. He probably, uh, he was a smart guy. He might have, if you're interested in, in knowing, maybe getting some hints about his life and seeing and hearing thought whether he was insider or not. He, I, he probably was insider. So anyway, that ends up that important news message. Everybody, are, don't you feel good about that? I mean, it's pretty good. I, the, the day I heard this, I laughed out loud all day. All day I was laughing. It's just unbelievable. Like, yes, we have, we've reached, like I was thinking, it's going to be 200 years before the public gets to see thought. The way things are going, it's too slow. This is, it's, it's just not going to come out. 200 years was my estimate. Um, 2,200. Uh, the vast majority of people in developed nations will know that thought can be seen and heard. Uh, they will not be able to see and hear thought themselves, or they will at least know that it's possible. That's how slow I thought the timeline was. Uh, it's still very slow. I don't really know for sure. But I would say that's very possible within our lifetime, and I'm 40 years old, um, that we are going to see thought and we are going to hear thought too it seems th- knowing this that these people in japan and you know you have to say, take a, a minute and talk about what's going on in japan and because it's amazing and it's wonderful and it's it's fantastic it's we all should be very grateful and i know i am very grateful for what's going on in japan and what's going on there is a massive birth of science a massive uh growth of science uh and enlightenment it's a it's a major enlightenment that is is surpassing that of uh, you know China and Europe and and uh, the Americas, uh, both North and South, um, and certainly the United States. Um, although we're having a mini enlightenment here, I'd say too, you know, with the with the election of Obama and um, a new direction. Uh, but in Japan, uh, you know, the, all you know, they have the walking robots. They have the entire auto industry practically is is in Japan. Um, they have the, uh, the all the video cameras, all of the uh, you know uh, cell phones and all this other stuff. I mean, a lot of it is in Japan. All technology. They have video phones, um, and then you know if you ever see, there's a lot of pornography that comes out of Japan too. A lot of uh, you know very open, like rooms full of people, uh, you know, kissing and hugging and and um, everybody's nude and all this other stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's like they're incredibly. Uh, you know, uh, pro-sexual, I mean, compared to many other places. Uh, they don't have any sort of hang-ups and, uh, and anger and hostility about and jealousy and, and uh, you know, uh, anger and violence or anything like that when it comes to, or, you know, or censorship and, uh, you know, uh, and total embarrassment about, you know, nudity and sexuality and stuff. No, they're busy enjoying themselves. I think a lot of them, from the appearance of these videos, if you ever just search for, you know, uh, anything, I'm sure you found them all over YouTube. You know, like, um, I, I'm not going to get into it, but it's they're all over the place. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's funny. It's funny. They're, every, you know, and they have the animation, too, which is amazing. If you've ever seen, like, uh, a Discipline or a Bible Black or whatever. Bible Black is sort of uh, gruesome, but, but Discipline is, is more positive. And, uh, um, but anyway... Um, so they're they're enlightened, but you know. So the uh, you know. So this doesn't surprise me. I mean, I, it does a little bit that I didn't really know that. But out of Japan, I was thinking that maybe out of France they would. You know, they had our Marwa and the thought reading machine book. I thought you know maybe it'll come out of France. I don't really know for sure. Or maybe it'll come out of like Venezuela or somebody. You know, some some nation like that. You know, where people are really. Uh, you know, opposed to uh, opposed to the the status quo and stuff. You know, um, uh, but it doesn't. It doesn't. You know, I mean, uh, uh, not out of South America, not out of Europe, anywhere, uh, not out of Africa, not out of Australia or anywhere, or not of China, uh, but out of this island, Japan. You know, which is uh, just amazing. Just amazing that they are. Maybe it's because it's small and they can, you know move forward in, in a technical direction and they've got rockets and they're going to the moon and all this other stuff, you know. They're, I'd say they're a little behind in terms of their moon and Mars programs and stuff, but, you know, in terms of technology, they leave everybody behind them in the dust, you know, I mean, um, the USA can't catch them uh, and doesn't